I'm tired of always being bad cop. I want to be good cop for this episode. There's only one civilized and classy way to settle this, Jordan. Come at me, bro. Welcome back, Deep Ruby TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. And it's Jordan Drake here. The victor. The victor, yes. Jordan won our sumo suit coin toss, so to speak. So he's I don't gonna know be, what those things are. He's going to be a good cop. I'm going to be a bad cop. And today we are talking about the good and the bad of Panasonic, a company that we have used for many, many years as generally our primary cameras to shoot our show. Yeah, and a very controversial one as well. So I'm sure a lot of people will have strong opinions, but mm -hmm. uh, let's get into the good and the bad of Panasonic Lumix cameras. All right, this one might seem really obvious, but I would say Panasonic has the best overall video functionality of any brand out there. I mean, there's a reason that we've been shooting our show largely on Panasonic cameras for years. They just make it very easy for videographers to work the way they're used to. They have things like waveforms and vector scopes for controlling your image. Uh, the V-Log profile is my favorite log profile out there. Very easy to work with in post. Uh, and then even in the menus and things like that, they just lay everything out in a very clear, concise manner. Yeah, it's really hard to argue with you on this one, Jordan, because yeah, we have used them for so many years. And it's not just the, the tools that are great, but also actually the image quality yeah. for video is fantastic out of them consistently. So they do make great video cameras. Okay. Okay, so our first topic for the bad of Panasonic. I know you're expecting this. Let's just rip the bandaid off so quickly and just get it over with. It's autofocus. Okay, just do it. I know, right? I, we've been harping on them about this for years. And, you know, let's give them their fair due. They certainly have tried to improve their depth from defocus uh, system over the years, right? Yeah. But it still always feels like just putting, you know, patches over the black mold on the wall, you know? I mean, you're just trying to cover it up. And the writing is on the wall, so to speak. I mean, people keep saying, when are they going to just give up and, and go with phase today? Everybody else is using a hybrid autofocusing system. When it comes to continuous autofocus, again, the hit rate is actually excellent. You just have to deal with that wobble, and it's just a little bit disconcerting when it comes to the experience of shooting. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The single autofocus performance has always been great. Sure. The DFD works very well for that, but you can't have pulsing in video. It's super no. irritating. With the GH6, we now have a focus limiter, which really does help it stay on your subject, but sure. shallow depth of field lens, you still have pulsing out of focus specular highlights so it's manual yeah. focus right now it's locked and up. again it's a lot of setup to do that i mean you know and with other companies it's so much easier using their subject detection features you know people are enjoying I detect tracking properly in video and it really does simplify the process and I just feel like Panasonic is missing out there. Well, I think the algorithms are already there. It's a very intuitive auto-focusing interface and Panasonic has said they're open to looking at phase detect. So maybe next generation, uh, the next series of S cameras, fingers crossed. I hope so. I'm gonna say it. I think Panasonic is the best company out there for firmware updates really evident because Panasonic is updating almost all their bodies across the line. I mean, basically, if the hardware is capable of it, we usually see firmware updates. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to argue on that one. I mean, the fact of the matter is, like, even when they did paid firmware updates, yeah. It, yeah, but it wasn't that expensive, and what you gained was pretty substantial. And again, they haven't done that in a long time, so yeah. you're right. I mean, we, we do many videos, actually, on Panasonic firmware updates alone because they are significant enough to do videos on. Yeah. So, yeah, kudos to Panasonic. Okay, so this is all well and good. Sounds like we're being pretty positive about Panasonic, but I have real gripes with their S bodies. Do you really? What's your issue with the S bodies, Chris? Well, okay, first thing, you have to admit, they just haven't released any new models in a long time. Yeah, well, I think if they are moving towards a phase detect system, it makes sense not to update any of the models till they can roll them all out with phase sure. detect for the autofocus system. Uh, but I've got a quick fix right now for a camera I think would be really popular. Uh, they have the sensor from the S1R. They have the itty bitty S5 body. And one thing Panasonic's are excellent for is landscape photography because the autofocus isn't as demanding. Stick that sensor in a little bitty travel body. That'd be a killer camera. But again, that's wishful thinking. Panasonic hasn't done that yet. And so as it stands, I'm just I feel saying like... for right now, if they put that out, nice, everybody would like it. And yes, we need to see an update on the S1H. I'm sure that is the best-selling Panasonic body. 
I'm hoping that we're going to see a stacked sensor on that because that is my real limitation with the S5, the S1, the S1H. It's just the readout speed on that sensor isn't the best. So it you just, get things like crops when you're doing 4K no, no, no. 60. And it leaves it me with the question, and I think a lot of people with a question, is Panasonic going to go back and make good photographic cameras or are they just going to continue on this path of really specializing into video as a niche and, and leaving the photographers behind? Well, as primarily a videographer, I'd be fine with that solution. You monster. One thing that Panasonic has an excellent grasp on is the ergonomics of their cameras, and it just keeps getting better and better. Are you insane? Or do, you, do you have a viral infection or something? Like what are you talking about? Okay, or something? so there are recent cameras that have come out. Like the GH6 especially, I think, is one of the best handling cameras. Yes, it's a little bulkier because of the fan on it, but the grip is wonderful. Everything is laid out so intuitively sure. on best it. Best handling cameras for a videographer, absolutely. Again, it comes back to that specialization on that. Like Look at the S-bodies that I just complained about. I mean, other than the S5, which is a little bit more compact. Great grip. You have to have giant Jordan hands, which is why you probably have no complaints. None. But you know, they're bulky, they're large. And then what about when you look at things like Micro Four Thirds? Panasonic used to make some awesome compact cameras. I mean, you know, the G9 is one of the best handling cameras, but Ever. also I miss the GX series, the GM series, and right. they just kind of let that go. They're never sexy. They're utilitarian, but they're never sexy. The LX100 was a sexy camera. Yeah, so where's that? One, <laughs> one sexy camera. <laughs> but I will say, Button controls are great. You have excellent dials. They're rugged cameras, absolute workhorses. But yeah, I feel like they could do a little bit better in the ergonomic and overall design. Hey, y'all remember that fantastic Nintendo game, Punch-Out? <laughs> Wasn't that great? What fantastic memories. But then I think about Panasonic and their new punch-in focus and I get very angry and very sad. Yes, they are sharp when you're punching in, but you cannot punch in during recording, and that okay. is such a previously, useful tool. Previously, that yes, was the case. I know where you're now going. Now with the GH6, you've got the ability to punch in while recording. It's one of the few video-optimized cameras that gives you that capability. I don't want to take away from that because that is a great step forward. Yes. But at the same time they made that step forward, they take another step backwards because it is soft, and it is difficult to use, you have to admit. It feels like we're using an old camera, and it certainly doesn't feel like what we're normally used to with Panasonic. And here's what really blows my mind. I would understand if it was soft when you're doing recordings. Right. You know, maybe it's a processor issue. The well, hardware... that's the problem with Sony and Fuji. Sure, right? Maybe the hardware can't handle it. But it's also soft when you're not recording. It's soft in photo mode. Okay, so yeah. it kind of makes me feel like there's a hardware or processor limitation there. And all that I can then say is going forward, hopefully this improves. I'm sure it will. But as it is now, it's not the amazing revelation that you're making it out to be. If you're like me, primarily doing video work, then Panasonic has one of the best lens lineups out there right I now. I mean, you just said it right there. I mean, that's my point. I've said it before. It's great for videographers. Okay, but if you look at a lot of the other lens lineups from the other companies, they're still figuring out how to make decent lenses for videographers, where Panasonic really has that figured out. You look at like the 2470 uh, in their S series, which has a beautiful focus clutch, breathing corrected. Mm -hmm. um, our favorite Micro Four Thirds lenses, the 10 to 25, the 25 to 50, I mean, they're actually matched. So they're like similar size and weight. You can put them on the exact same follow focus unit. They'll Absolutely. line right up. They have focus clutches on a lot of their lenses. Even their S series primes, they're trying to make them all, you know, the same filter diameters, the same weight. Again, Again, focus breathing corrected. They're just taking all of these steps that other lens manufacturers are just flat out ignoring. I, you know, absolutely. I'm not going to take away from that. They're great for videographers. But do other lenses out resolve them? I, in the S series, certainly. <laughs> we're always doing like Sigma versus Panasonic, and it's the same story every time. Is right. the Panasonics are better for video, and the same as are sharper. Now, make no mistake, the Panasonic lenses, I think they take beautiful photos. I just feel like the optimizations are aimed at videographers. Okay, but if they're really going to embrace the video side, here's one more thing I would love to see from Panasonic. Make a pro power zoom lens. Mm. You know, they've had some consumer power zoom ones. I think that would make so much sense for what they're doing. You know, like a 1025, 2550 with power zoom on it that's par focal. That would be amazing. So make that happen, Panasonic. And I'll scoop them babies up. Speaking of lenses, I did just praise Panasonic for having great support, especially in Micro Four Thirds. But there are issues there. Okay, so Jordan, my next gripe, it's not that it's a big gripe, it's just that we've had this gripe for years and years and years and nothing has gotten better. And the fact is, Micro Four Thirds has been a lens mount that's been shared for a long time between notably Olympus and Panasonic. Yeah. And after all these years, although you can mix and match lenses on the mounts, you just don't get the compatibility. Like there's right. just no support and I don't know why it's gotten better. I mean, 
Who's out there really putting Olympus glass on Panasonic bodies? I, I do that all the time. Yeah, because you're only manually focusing That's and true. you're not really worried about image stabilization because you're on a tripod a lot of the time okay. or a monopod. I mean, come on. I mean, the fact is you're just not getting full support and it should be by now supported. Okay. I mean, it's tough to say, is this really Panasonic's fault or maybe it's previously Olympus? Now, all the systems are just like, you know, they're the ones who are really grinding everything to a stop here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I do think it's definitely definitely an issue that they should address and we should say exactly what that is. I mean if you use Olympus or OM system lenses on Panasonic that flutter oh, yeah. is more noticeable. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then the stabilizers like both Olympus and Panasonic have that stabilization mode where the lens and the IBIS works together and yeah. it works great but it doesn't work if you put a stabilized Olympus lens on a Panasonic no, it or a stabilized Panasonic on an Olympus. And here's and an example. I love the Olympus 12 to 100 f4. Okay. Fantastic great lens. lens. Yeah, one of my favorites but I'll only use it on Olympus or OM system bodies. And I'm not saying that's a problem. I love those bodies but that's where I get the dual IS and I can hand hold that stuff and it's like having a monopod with you all the time. It's that good. And you, I just feel like you lose too much if you're going to put on a Panasonic body or vice versa. So. I, yeah, I would love to see them sort this out. Micro Four Thirds bodies in particular are a little bit resolution limited and that's why I love multi-shot modes for them and I think Panasonic have the best ones out there. Okay, so yes, there's other camera manufacturers who have multi-shot modes yes. where it takes a bunch of pictures, puts them together to give you a more detailed image. Some do it incredibly well like Panasonic, some do it bad like Sony. Amen. And here's why I think Panasonic is the best at this. I mean, you have a handheld high-res mode, so you don't have to drag a tripod around. That's something that only Olympus had for quite a while. Praise be. I really like that you can just play back the files in camera, see if there's any issues while you're still out in the field, mm -hmm. instead of having to bring the files back, assemble them on the computer like Sony. Tell it, brother. And as well, I think they have the best motion compensation. So if something does move in the shot, it only uses one of the photos for that subject and you don't see any kind of weird streaking or blurring or anything like that. I think it works really well. And the great thing about multi-shot, it's not just about getting more detail in it. Uh, let's take, for example, the GH6, where dynamic range and photo mode might be, some would say a little rocky, um, myself included. Uh, you can just use a multi-shot and that's gonna give you way, way cleaner shadows and makes those landscapes shots a lot more usable. So there, what could you possibly have to complain about, Chris? That was a great sermon, Jordan. Absolutely. I agree with pretty much all of it. But can we go back and talk about how bad the dynamic range is on the GH6's That's not the photo? topic that we're talking about right now. I don't think we need to. It's primarily a video camera. Dynamic range and video mode is but fantastic. that'd be a great we're bad done. cop for me. No, uh, oh, can we talk about the G100? I would prefer not to. I'm sure you wouldn't, but let's do it anyways. And we've been talking today about how great Panasonic is for video camera work. And uh, vlogging is a very trendy okay. new kind of video, isn't it, well, Jordan? Well, it's been around for decades, <laughs> I think, at this point. I mean, okay, so the G100, they they said it was built for vloggers yeah. um, and you know that audio system that they had where it did like spatial audio, Great audio. Very interesting does it have a headphone jack so you can listen to that fantastic audio no it does not I mean it's just so many oversights on that like you know having a crop factor when you're recording 4k on it when already the kit sure. lens wasn't all that wide to start with absolutely uh, no image stabilizer on it. <laughs> the thing that's infuriating about it is Panasonic has all the technology they need to make a great Micro sure. Four Thirds vlogging camera. I mean, just make strange. a small body, put the IBIS in it, no 4K crop, something that they've had as an option for a long time. They just brought out a brilliant little nine millimeter lens that's not that expensive. That make nice. it a kit, put a headphone jack on it. And okay, the focus might not be the best, but put the focus limiter from the GH6 on and it would be totally adequate for vlogging. It'd be a great well-rounded camera, make it small, you know, no problems at all. There, Panasonic, I just designed a winner for you. <laughs> Well, I think those are pretty civil argument. We both made good points, I feel. But if you still want to fight, let's uh, get back in those suits and just finish it. Those stupid, stupid suits. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think Panasonic should and shouldn't do in the future. And, you know, lots of people watch our videos. Our view numbers are very good, but our subscriber numbers are bad. So you should uh, subscribe yeah. and fix that, please. We want our view cake and we want to eat our subscribers too. God, you're so good at this. I know, right? All right, let's go wrestle. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys soon for another episode of DP Review TV.